in the previous lecture we started the discussion on branch line hybrid as the next step after coupled line directional couplers in the hope of being able to send more power to the second conductor but then we saw that it is not possible to send very high power from one conductor to another conductor without having any direct connection path between them so essentially we started the basic analysis of a branch line hybrid so we essentially said that the top view of a branch line hybrid looks something like this kind of like a square where each arm is a transmission line of length lambda by 4 except that the impedance of these two lines are called as zm and these two lines are called zb and there are four ports and the feed line of each port can be z0 so this is port 1 port 2 and we called this as port 3 because we also proved that port 4 is isolated with respect to port 1 so there is a slight difference in the notation of ports 3 and 4 when you compare it with a coupled line directional coupler so towards the end of the previous lecture we proved that this condition is necessary this condition is needed so to to delve into the problem further and obtain the s parameters in the hope of having an equal s21 and s31 in magnitude we could do that let us apply the even and odd mode again to the structure so let's say we have two modes in the even mode we will have one kind of analysis and in the odd mode we will have another kind of analysis so assume that there are two sources we'll call them as v1 and v1 equal magnitude opposite so equal magnitude and same polarity and the other two ports ports 2 and 3 are terminated with a match load z0 on the other hand over here we have a v1 and over here we have a minus v1 and as always these two are terminated with z0 so if we now make a line of symmetry across the structure in this manner we can define that just like the way we did for the coupled line coupler the reflection coefficient for inputs over here let's call them as gamma e on each arm because they are symmetric and the transmission coefficient we will call them as te likewise over here for inputs this way the reflection coefficient is gamma o in the odd mode and over here also it will be gamma o in the odd mode and the transmission coefficients we will call them as to and to so once again we will do what we did for the wilkinson case and also for the coupled line case that is we will take any of the halves in each mode so effectively what is happening 
the circuit essentially becomes something like this. We have a ZM light and two ZB lights. Now because they are cut, this length will be lambda by 8. So let us say the input is over here and the output is here. And this length as before is lambda by 4. And these two are open circuits. Over here, in the odd mode, there will be a virtual shot along the line of symmetry. So this will be ZB, ZB, ZM. This will again be lambda by 8. This will be lambda by 4. The only difference is that these will be now grounded. Because of the virtual shot. Now, to analyze this, there are three elements. One line of lambda by 8, one line of lambda by 4, and another line of lambda by 8. The first and third elements, they are essentially shunt elements or parallel elements. We can also call them stubs since they are open-ended over here and short-ended over here. So effectively, the structure in each mode reduces to something like this. Each stub is of lambda by 8, the main line is of lambda by 4 and the last stub also is of lambda by 8. So in the even mode, if we write it back over here like this, we have three elements connected one after the other. So therefore, it will be quite useful to use the ABCD matrices and using the ABCD matrix of each element, we can essentially just multiply the three of them in this order and we will get the total ABCD matrix from which we can get the reflection and transmission coefficients quite easily. Now, for this what we will need? We will need to find out the ABCD matrix of a lambda by 8 parallel stub. So therefore, it is like saying we need something like this. Consider this as port 1 and this is port 2. There is a stub over here, open circuit in the even mode and short circuit in the odd mode. And let us say the impedance over here is ZB. This is also ZB and the length is lambda by 8 as we had discussed. So what will be the ABCD matrix between ports 1 and 2 for each of these networks? Well, you can find this out fairly easily. Let us say I want to find out what is the ABCD matrix for this. So as we know, the A parameter is nothing but V1 by V2 under a certain condition. The condition is that the I2 must be 0. That is the current in port 2 should be 0. So therefore, if the current in port 2 is 0, that means there is effectively an open circuit over there. And in the limiting case where we can assume that only this stub is the network, we can essentially consider 1 and 2 as the same point. Port 1 and 2 essentially become the same. So therefore, A is equal to 1. What about B? What about B? B is essentially V1 by I2 
when v2 is 0. So when v2 is 0, that means there will essentially be a short circuit at port 2. Again, in the limiting case, if there is a short circuit at port 2, we consider only this term as the network. Ports 1 and 2 essentially become the same point. So therefore, if port 2 becomes a short circuit, there will be no voltage at port 1 also, thereby effectively making V1 as 0. So therefore, V will be 0. What about C? C is I1 by V2 when I2 is 0. So again, this becomes an open circuit. Now we need to know what is this I1 by V2. So I1 is essentially the current that is being drawn in into this network over here and V2 is the voltage at port 2. So again, if you consider the limiting case where port 1 and port 2 become the same point, I1 by V2 is nothing but the admittance looking into this term. Disturb admittance. So using the impedance transformation relation, we can very easily find out what is the admittance looking into the other side of an open circuited lambda by 8 stub. And that comes out to be J y b where y b is 1 by z d. Likewise, d is i1 by i2 when v2 is 0. So in the short circuit, in the short circuit case, this will be 0 or this will be a short circuit, the port 2. So effectively, you can prove that the net impedance looking into this junction would be a parallel combination of a stub and a short circuit which is essentially a short circuit. So therefore, all the current will go to port 2. So therefore, D is 1. So the ABCD matrix of each of these shunt stubs would look like this. This is the matrix. Likewise, for the odd mode, each of these shunt stubs which are short circuited would be same except there would be a sign change in the C. This you can prove by yourself quite easily. So the stub line stub combinations, the stub line and stub combinations in the even mode and the odd mode. Therefore, would give an even mode ABCD matrix in the following way. This comes as a consequence of the ABCD parameters of a normal lambda by 4 transmission line and this we have used to analyze the case of the coupled line structure also. Please note this is at lambda by 4 length. So in the odd mode, the ABCD matrix would become minus JYB 1. This one will not change. And this is how it is. So we can essentially open up the brackets, open up the matrices and take the products. And this would become
and this one would become So with this we have got the ABCD matrices in the even mode as well as the odd mode for each half of the branch line hybrid. So from this we will proceed in the same manner to calculate the gamma E and TE in the even mode and gamma O and TO in the odd mode. So, what we would essentially have before we do that, we can put our S parameter analysis from the even and odd mode and obtain the S parameters. So, when you apply the superposition principle, what you will essentially get is S11 becomes equal to gamma E plus gamma O by 2, similar to the case of the coupled line coupler. Then S21 will be TE plus TO by 2, S31 will be TE minus TO by 2, and S41 will be gamma E minus gamma O by 2. Now, let us look at the even mode. Let us look at the even mode. Where gamma E can be obtained in this way. The standard formula for converting from ABCD parameters into S parameters. That is AE minus BE plus BEY0 minus CEZ0. So, if you substitute, you will essentially see that AE and DE are the same. So these two will get cancelled out and you will essentially get some expression from here. And likewise you can find out gamma O also that is AO minus DO plus BOY0 minus COZ0 divided by Here also you will see the same thing happening. Now once you get this, once you get these two, you will effectively see that S11 which is nothing but gamma E plus gamma O by 2. We need this to be 0 because we want O21 to be matched. Likewise, likewise, S41 which is now gamma E minus gamma O by 2. And this is also needed to be 0 because we need isolation between ports 4 and 1. Anything that is input at port 1, nothing of that should go to port 4. So if you solve these two equations simultaneously, you will see that only one solution is possible. And that is gamma E and gamma O must both be 0. So 
for this to happen, what should happen is that for both of these to be zero, the numerators must be zero. So if either one we take, will not make a difference. So let us take the numerator for the gamma e, that is v e y zero minus c e z zero is equal to zero. So let's substitute what is this v e and c e over here. So this is v e and this is c. E. Let's do that. So v e is j z m y zero minus c e is j y m minus j y b square z m times z zero should be equal to zero. So these j terms will all get cancelled out, and what we will see essentially is this z m by z zero minus. If you take z zero over here, you will get z zero by z m plus z m z zero by z b square, and that is equal to zero. If you solve for the odd mode gamma also, that is gamma o, you will get the exact same equation. So therefore, this equation is called as the characteristic equation. Characteristic equation of the branch line hybrid. This is the characteristic equation of the branch line hybrid. So, what does this, this indicate? This ensures that S11 and S41 are both zero. That is perfect matching at the ports and perfect isolation. So, if we fix Z0, there are multiple solutions possible for Zm and Z. There are multiple solutions possible. Now the question is which one should we choose? We should choose that solution which gives us the required value of S21 and S31. So for this to happen, We need to know what is the value of S21 and S31 that we need. So we had briefly discussed in the previous lecture that why not try to send equal powers to both S21 or rather to port 2 as well as port 3 when the input is at port 1. So we had proved that for S21 the phase is 90 degrees and for S31 the phase is 180 degrees. So therefore S21 essentially is minus j by root 2 and S31 is minus 1 by root 2. This is what we need. So let us try to substitute those. So we know that S21 as we have established is Te plus To by 2 and S31 is Te minus To by 2. So Te you will get as 2 by a e plus b e plus c e so a plus d e plus b e y zero plus c e z zero similar for t o so if we now put these two equations to the values that we need that is s21 is actually t e plus t o by 2 which is nothing but minus j by root 2. This is what we need. And S31 is Te minus To by 2, which is equal to minus 1 by root 2. So again, there are two equations and there are two unknowns, Te and To. So we can quite easily solve and obtain Te and To. What would they be? What would be the values of Te and To? So we will get Te 
is equal to minus 1 by root 2 minus j by root 2 and TO comes out to be 1 by root 2 minus j by root 2. So, we had already said that TE is this quantity. TE is this quantity. Now, if we substitute this value of TE in that equation which I had shown, that is AE and BE are minus YB ZM each. So, this will be minus 2 YB ZM plus this will be equal to this quantity. Right? So, this is a pretty complex looking equation and what one thing that we can do is we can rationalize this and then separate out the real and imaginary parts and we can equate the real parts on each side. So, effectively what happens is if you equate the real parts, this complex looking and tedious looking equation essentially solves out to this 2yb zm turns out to be equal to root 2. So, that means yb zm equals 1 by root 2. So, this is the other equation. So that means Zm is always Zb by root 2. Now what we need to do, we have one more equation which we can substitute in this characteristic equation and therefore get a solution. We know from here and this has to be substituted. in the characteristic equation. And if you substitute that, let us let's write this down. The characteristic equation was this. So, over here, if we substitute Zm as Zb by root 2, we will get Zb by root 2 by Z0. So, therefore, this and this will get cancelled, which implies now that Zb by root 2 Z0 minus Z0 root 2 by Zb plus Z0 by root 2 Zb should be equal to 0. So, what we are now getting is a relationship between Zb and Z0. So, usually Z0 is fixed. So, what we can do is just solve for Zb get all the Zb terms on one side and we will get that so when we are taking this common
or uh, even do this but it seems we will get a second order term which we don't want so let's let's take it on the other side so this will be minus this will be minus so zb square will be root 2 times z0 square times root 2 minus 1 by root 2 so when we expand this we will get zb square will be equal to 2z0 square minus this will be 1 z0 square which is z0 square now, since we are talking of impedances they can never be negative so zb square equal to z0 square would mean that zb will be equal to z0 and we know from this that zm will be zb by root 2 which is nothing but z0 by root 2. This is the requirement for well matched ports, perfect isolation and equal power division between ports 2 and 3. So the branch line hybrid essentially looks like this. And the S matrix will be this. This is what it is, but it must be noted that this is only at the frequency F0 where the line length becomes exactly lambda 0 by 4 for the wave. For other frequencies, just like the quarter wave transformer and the Wilkinson, this lambda by 4 dependence is there. This S matrix would also change. Certainly. So, if you were to look and ask, what does a branch line hybrid look like in practice? This is what it looks like. So let us say Z0 is 50 ohms. If Z0 is 50 ohms, then I can say that for an equal split branch line hybrid, what will happen is that Zb will be equal to 50 ohms and Zm will be 50 by root 2 ohms, which is equal to 35. 0.35 ohms. So, suppose I have a substrate which 
which is this where the epsilon r is 4.4 and the height of the substrate is about 1.6 millimeters then for a frequency of 900 megahertz you can very easily synthesize this, these lines and essentially they would look like this you would essentially have these four ports and this is the ZB line and since ZM is less than ZB this ZM line will be a little thicker And if you want to know the dimensions, you can use any standard calculator. So the microstrip substrate means the bottom layer must be always round. So for 50 ohm lines, the width will be about 3 millimeters. And for the 35.35 ohm lines, the width will be around 5.2 millimeters. And the length of the main line is 44.5 and the length of the branch lines would be 44.7 millimeters. Sorry. 45.7. Yeah, 45.7. This is a brief example of what it looks like. This can be port 1, this can be port 2. This can be port 3 and this is port 4. These are metallic kind of conductions. Now, one thing to note, however, is the characteristic equation of the branch line, which was this. So, as I said, this characteristic equation has infinite solutions. This particular solution is a very special case for when you get half or equal split into ports 2 and 3 or the, what we call as a half power split. If you have some other solutions, if you have some other solutions, in general, S21 and S31 will not be equal. That is more like what we have for an unequal power divider or the coupled line directional coupler case where anyway these two are not equal. But one thing I can say, if, if Zm is decreased, if Zm is decreased, S21 will increase because the impedance between ports 1 and 2 reduces and more power will flow to port 2. Likewise, if ZB is reduced, if ZB is reduced, then S31 will go up. So if effectively there exist infinite solutions for infinite types of power division. But you will always see that for all these cases, S11 and S41 will always be 0 because this, this condition is used to obtain this characteristic equation. So what you will essentially see is that no matter what is the power division between ports 2 and 3, this network will always be a matched lossy and reciprocal network. So I'm sorry, it will be matched lossless and a reciprocal network. It has to be lossless because there is no lossy element which can possibly dissipate any power. So this is very interesting where we are also essentially being able to realize 
a half power division but using a four port device so therefore it is kind of like saying we are achieving what the wilkinson divider achieved with different phase and with no loss except that we are adding one more port because it is not possible to achieve all the three criteria for match match port losslessness and reciprocity in a three port network so therefore some people call branch line hybrids as a four port power divider then again unlike the wilkinson since the arms are symmetric the phase difference or the phase delay through each arm is pi by 2 or 90 degrees here that is not the case from port 1 to port 2 the phase delay is 90 degrees and from port 1 to port 3 the phase delay is 180 degrees so therefore it is not all quite a symmetric combiner although it is reciprocal and lossless so therefore i encourage you as an exercise to find out multiple solutions for this characteristic equation and then see what will be the values of s21 and s31 at the center frequency that is center frequency is f0 where the length of each line the frequency at which the length of each line becomes exactly equal to the one fourth of the wavelength of the wave that is flowing in it secondly the drawback of the branch line hybrid is that it is a narrow band device because each of these lines is lambda by 4 so therefore it will be able to give you the mass condition and the power division condition at just a single frequency unlike the coupled line coupler where the matching and isolation were perfect no matter what the frequency was so therefore inherently the branch line hybrid is a narrow band device because it consists of quarter wave transformers and because of the quarter wave transformers as per our quarter wave theory the the network essentially becomes more and more narrow band so there is a lot of research which has been done to improve the bandwidth of this kind of branch line hybrids and just in the way we had multiple sections of a quarter wave transformer to improve the matching bandwidth there are multiple sections of a branch line coupler also and there are that, that opened up numerous possibilities for improving the bandwidth and there are several reported solutions in the literature so with this we come to the end of the major part of the discussion about four port rf devices in particular directional couplers and hybrids thank you